All right, before we start this lesson, I want to do a quick review with you on <clears throat> fractions, okay? Especially with multiplying divided fraction, I hope you still remember the very basic steps. For example, if I'm going to give you 2 thirds times it by 5 halves, for example. How do you do that? Oh, wait, wait. Do we need to have a, the same denominator when we multiply? No, no. Do we have to? No. No, we don't. Only when we add or subtract, right? That's why that's where we have to find LCD. But for multiplying, we do not have to. In this case, we just we simply multiply right across. Is that correct? Yeah. But here's another strategy that I, I want you to start using for this chapter. Is yes, I, I realize that you can say, oh, two times five is ten, right? And then three times two is six. But if I had to write it for you and show you, two times five is written like this, and of course two times three is written like this. Notice why I did not actually multiply them together yet. You know why? Okay, let me show you why. Because I realize that I can cancel out the two. Don't they have the top and the bottom look the same? Identical terms? We can actually cancel out. We learn how to cancel out and simplify things, right? So instead of making things bigger, if you see something that you can actually cancel, do that first. So this is the reason why I want to hold off on multiplying and see if I can actually simplify before I multiply. So in this case, if I cancel out the two, I end up with 5 third. If you were to just multiply and get 10 over 6, won't that give you 5 thirds anyway if you divide both by 2? So either way, we'll give you the same answer. But I want it to be simpler for you. Okay? Another thing that you need to be careful about is that the only time when you can actually cancel out like terms or like factors are when, is when you have things that are linked up by multiplication sign. I've seen students trying to cancel out terms like this. And I want you to avoid this at all costs. For instance, if I have 5x squared minus 2 and divided by, for example, another 5x squared plus 3, for example, right? I'm just saying this. Some people would do something like this. I just cancel out the 5x squared because, oh, yeah, like, they look the same and I'm dividing, so therefore I can do it. Here's my answer to you. You cannot do something like that, ever. Okay? First of all, they're not linked up by multiplication sign. These are two terms on top of two terms. Okay? If it was written like this with 5x squared, and then here's another negative 2 like this, and you have 5x squared with a 3 right here, notice that they're linked up by multiplication sign, and yes, you can actually cancel this out, and the answer is two, negative 2 over 3. That is the only time you can actually cancel out. So be very careful. Do not take the easy, well, easy way out until you verify that, yes, everything is linked up by multiplication, and so because of that, I can now look for like terms or like factors so that I can cancel out, make it simpler. Okay? Uh, okay? So, that, yes. so you can't cancel them out as a group? Yeah, cannot. But as a group, like this, if I have, remember what we learned yesterday? That if I have something that uh, looks like the following. You see how it's still technically linked up by multiplication sign? Yeah. <laughs> and as a group, I treat it as one whole thing. So when I look at this, I do I have 5x plus 3 down here? If they look exactly the same as a group, then yes, you can still cancel that out, even if it's a plus inside. But because I'm contained that inside the parentheses, it means it's one whole thing. Okay? So that's the only time I can actually cancel out. And these are called factors, right? Mm -hmm. So we can actually cancel that out. But you can still make the argument of, wait, as a group, aren't they still linked up by multiplication sign? And they are. Okay? So that's another thing I want to mention today, making sure that you know this. And uh, another example that I want to give you before we start is division. Do you guys still remember how do we um, how we divide at all? Yeah. For example, three fifths divided by two thirds. How do I divide? Okay, so you say something about reciprocal, but which fraction will take the reciprocal? Second one. The second one. So we take the second fraction, we flip that, which will turn to three halves, three halves right? And what will happen to the division sign? Yes. So you turn that into a multiplication sign, and of course the first fraction remains the same. And now you can still follow up with the same idea of if we multiply fractions, we simply multiply right across. And yes, just an old habit of just like, oh, so it's 3 times 3 and 5 times uh, 2. There's nothing that I can cancel, therefore I just go ahead and multiply it in 9 over 10. Done. You see it? So that's the basic review of fractions. And yes, there will be another review on how to add and subtract fractions too when we get to that point. But there it is. Are there any questions at this point? Okay, without further questions, I want to go ahead and give you this prompt right now. So you can actually... Can you decide who is making a mistake on this problem? Is it uh, Amiri or is it Hoshi? 
Look at how Mary's doing her problem. And look at how Hoshi is doing, I don't know, his or her problem. But which one is making a big mistake? Hoshi? <coughs> Why? Because her ex is not in front of both location. And notice what, what Hoshi's doing. Once again, remember? Crossed out like that? You can't, remember? Yeah. Okay, one other thing is, notice that Hoshi here is trying to cross this out too. That's how this x minus 3 over x plus 3 disappeared. Cannot do that either. You see it? But look at what Amiri did. She actually multiplied across using the concept of fractions, right? And that's how she got x minus 3 times 4x. Bottom, x plus 3 times, of course, she's trying to factor this using x box, right? Yeah. And that's how she got x minus 3 times x minus 1. Once everything is factored out, and notice that everything's linked by multiplications, now she can start canceling like terms or like factors. And this is the, the correct way to do it. Okay, so I want you to look at this prompt carefully and, and learn from that mistake. Because I do not want you to do the same thing like Hoshi did. Okay? So with that in mind, take a look at our first problem for today. And it looks like this. We have 10r to the third uh, over 6n cubed times 42n <coughs> squared divided by 35r cubed. Okay, I want you to multiply and simplify to the best of your ability. What would you do? This is simply a fraction, isn't it? This is another fraction. So fraction times a fraction. What do you do when you have fraction times a fraction? Multiply what? Across. Okay, now here's the thing though. Do you want to take 10 times 42 to make it 420? Or do you want to do something like that? Okay, so let me show you a, a technique here which will make it simple, simple for you. When you have a, a multiplication problem, and I agree with you, you should multiply, right? However, our goal here is to simplify. Simplify means we factor if we can, we make it smaller if we can. So to do this kind of problem uh, um, effectively, I would do something like this. For 10, I would break it down. What times what is 10? 5 times 2. 2 and 5. So watch what happened. I wrote 2 and 5. And I take that and times by 42. But instead of writing 42, what can I write? Six and seven. Good. So is that true that 2 times 5 is 10, 6 times 7 is 42, so I got 10 and 42 covered? Mm -hmm. Then I do the same thing for r cubed, right? r cubed, I know I just write r cubed. n squared, I can just write n squared. See? They're all linked up by what? Multiplication. multiplication. That is our condition. They must link up by multiplication before we can cancel. What, what about the bottom? What, how can three can I write three. 6 another way? Three times 2 times 3, okay. What about 35? Seven, 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 five. Okay, good. And we have the r cubed and we have the n cubed, correct? Mm -hmm. And notice once again, they're all linked up by multiplication. multiplication. No addition or subtraction inside, right? So now we look carefully and say, wait, do we have anything in common to cancel yeah, out? The two. the two, so I crossed out the two. The five. The, five. the, five. R the seven. R cubed. The seven. The r cubed, right? And one n squared. Wait, no. How many ends can I cancel? Two. One. One. No. We have two ends on top, three ends on bottom. Two. So how many ends do I have left? One. Where is it going to be? The bottom. So I know that I have one in the bottom. And uh, what about the number? What do I have left for the number? Three. Six over three, right? What's six over three? Two. Two. Where do I put the two? Top. On top. And that's what I have done. I'm simplifying. That's it. So simplifying this case means if I see anything in common, I cross that out. Whatever I have left over, that's my answer. So you're <coughs> literally cleaning up the garbage in a sense. If it's not necessary, we, we take that out. Okay? Question on this. Looks good? Okay. Now I'm going to introduce you um, polynomials factoring. And of course, um, simplifying as well. So what you have here, once again, it looks really long, but don't you still have two fractions to multiply? This is a fraction, and that's a fraction. It's written in a rational expression form. But so what? We learned how to factor yesterday, so let's start taking care of our business here by factoring. So notice here, what I realize is this is how many terms? Three. Two, three terms, three terms, three terms, two terms, right? Mm -hmm. So depending on how many terms I have, I ask the right questions when I get to that specific problem. So, but I know that the first two questions I, 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 I always ask myself is this. Is everything in order? Everything in order? 
Looks good to me, right? Second question is, do we have a GCF for any of them? No. None. So I'm dealt with those two questions. And I just go ahead and focus on, first of all, I have three terms right here. If it's three terms, what can I do? PST Is it a PST? No. 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 Fine. Then move on. Xbox. Is, OK, let's do Xbox on this. X, what do I put? Six on top. Negative six, six on top. Negative. negative six on top. What else? Negative, negative one. one. Now you have to tell me, what times what will give you negative six add up to negative one? Negative three, two. Let's check that out, see how that's going to work. Negative three and two. Negative three times two is negative six. Negative three plus two is negative one. Some of you might argue saying, I can have uh, six, six and one, right? Right? But then don't forget, for six and one, you can never add up to negative one, ever. Is that true? Too far apart. So the only option you have is three and two. And you can just play around with the sign to get the right sum. And, and yes, we'll, we'll get to that point. Move on to the next one. I'm trying to use a different color to show you here. Uh, but take a look at this. We can still use the X on this one, right? Yeah. What do I put up on top? 12. 7. What times what is 12 add up to 7? 3 and 4. Very good. So we got that. Here's the next one. I look at a squared minus 16. That's We have two terms, right? And then, so I start asking dots right away. Is that a dots? Yes. Okay, so that means I can write it as square. How do I write a square? A inside square. Okay, what about 16? Four. 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 Square, right? And so with that in mind, I can do the, the expansion later, right? We know that. Moving on to this last one right here. Here's another x. Or do we need an x? Four. Four. No. No. Is that a PST? Yes. It is. But let's say we forgot that it's a PST and we still want to do an x on it. Can we do an x? Yeah. Yes, what do we put on top? Four. Four, bottom? Four. What times one is four? Add it to four. Two. Two and? Two. two. That works still, see? So either way, it works out um, wonderfully. And so now I put the whole thing together. And but notice what Jamie said earlier about, hey, can we use a shortcut on this? And the answer is yes, because this is a one in front, right? That's a one in front. That's a one in front. So therefore, we can actually use a shortcut and we don't need to use a block. Now, if you want to do a box on it, to follow, you still get the same answer, but it's a bit longer. So here, for the purple one, I would have x minus 3, x plus 2. Is that correct? Okay. And here for the, I'm, I'm sorry, pink, and then here's the purple one. I would have x plus 3, x plus 4. Okay? And the bottom, the green, how do I expand a square and 4 square? A plus 4? A plus 4. A minus 4. Any question on that? And the blue, how do I write that? A plus 2. A plus 2. And I kind of messed up on here. It's not X. It's, they're all A. I don't know why I wrote X. Just fix that for me. It's supposed to be A. And this is supposed to be X. So um, A as well. OK. There it is. Right? Yep. Now, before I cross out, what do I ask myself? Well, it's linked up by multiplication, but what is it that I need to check for now? What is it? No, no, no. What is that that I check for at the bottom? Bottom. Remember that one? What are those called? Excluded values. Excluded values. Right. You've got to check for excluded value because we cannot afford to have any zero in the bottom, right? Yeah. Meaning we set each one, if I have to show you, each one is set to zero. And solve for it, and the blue one too, of course. But I'm just showing you that this is what's supposed to happen. So if you were to solve for it, what is my excluded value here? Negative, negative, four. Four. negative four, positive four, positive four. Negative, two. negative two, and negative two. So basically, A, let me just go and erase this part for now. A cannot be negative four, positive four, or negative two. These are called excluded values because any of these values plug into the bottom will make the entire thing turns to zero. We cannot allow that to happen. Okay? But other than that, we can now go back and say, can I cancel anything out? Yes. What? A plus two. A plus two is gone. Anything else? A plus four. A plus four is gone. And anything else? Okay, if not, then we just can conclude this with A minus three, A plus three, over A minus four, A plus two, and this is our simplified form, we're done. That's it. So a lot of factoring um, are involved here for this kind of problem, but notice the rest here simply means I need to find my excluded value and cancel out like factors. 
That's it. Just like yesterday. Question on this. Okay, so to follow up with this problem, I have here a division problem. How do we take care of division again? Uh, ah, so whether it's, it looks horrendous, I don't really care. Same basic idea. If I have a fraction divided by a fraction, I will have to turn it back into a what? That problem? Multiplication. Multiplication. So watch what I'm going to write. x squared plus 2x minus 15 over x squared minus x minus 30. Watch what happens with the division sign. I turn it back into a multiplication, a multiplication sign. And in the process, I have to flip the second fraction, or taking the reciprocal of that. And this is what you now see. Any question on this? And the rest is exactly the same like the previous problem, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I factor by my um, excluded values, and then, I'm, and then I try, try to simplify. So I know I, I, I have to show you step by step, but now that you've seen how it's done, can anyone tell me, with this one right here, what do I put in the x? Negative, negative, negative 15. Negative what else? Two. 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 What times what is negative 15 added to 2? Negative 3. Negative 3. No. Negative, five. negative 3 and 5. Negative 3 and 5. Very good. Oh, yeah. Negative 3 and 5. Okay, one down, three more to go. Move on. What do you put here? Uh, negative, negative 30. Negative. Next. Negative, negative, negative one. 1. What times what is negative 30 added to negative 1? Six. Besides 6 times 3. 6 and 5. 6 and 5. Very good. 6 and 5, which one has to be a negative? Uh, 6. Good. Do you realize that this last number here dictates the bigger number, whatever whatever it is, the bigger number would take on that sign. If the bottom is a positive, the bigger number will be a positive. If the bigger number, I mean, if the bottom is a negative, the bigger number will be a negative. Let me show you over here. What do I put on top? Negative 24. Negative 2. Just give me two positive numbers right now. What times what is 24 added to 2? 6 and 4. Watch what happened. I know right away that negative 6 is going to be the 1 because the 6 is the bigger value. And because I want to have a negative 2 at the end, I want to have that 6. You see it? Here's another negative 18 and negative 3. Just give me two positive numbers that will give me a positive 18. Huh? 6 and 3. And right away, I know negative 6 will get it. You know why? Because the bottom is a negative. That's it. That's how you do it. We're good? You see that technique? Yeah. It's fast, right? The problem looks pretty long, but you can actually make it fast by learning some very basic techniques. Now, can I do a shortcut on all of them? Yes. So let's do that. The first one is x minus 3, x plus 5, times it by x minus 6, x plus 4. The bottom, right here, x minus 6, x plus 5, x minus 6, x plus 3. And before I say, yeah, they're all laid up by multiplication sign, it's all good, right? We can cancel. But excluded values, please. Can anyone tell me what the excluded six, values are? Six, five, five, six, and negative three. Uh, six, negative, negative five, eight, six, and negative three. And eight three. Notice I don't have to repeat the six again because I already have it in here in this uh, you know in this list. So these are my excluded values. I should just say excluded value equal instead of not equal. No, equals six, negative five, negative three. Can I cancel anything out? Uh, negative. negative six cancel. Anything else? Negative of five. Positive 5. Anything else? Uh, no. Nope. So our final answer, guys, is x minus 3, x plus 4, over x minus 6, x plus 3. And that's how we do it. Question on that. No. So there it is. That's the problem for you. Moving on to the next one. Look at this conversion, guys. Now I'm going to teach you a new technique today to convert from one unit to the other. In this case, let's look at our first problem. Inch into feet. Six. Let me just give, whenever I give you a problem like this to convert, just ask yourself, okay, what is it the basic unit conversion for inch and feet? Anyone tell me? Want to share? Twelve inches in one foot. So let's write that down. The only thing that I know right now is I have 12 inches in one foot. That's all you care about. This is called the conversion rate. As long as you know your conversion rate, you're good to go. And what I'm teaching you here today is called dimensional analysis. So let's write that down. It's called 
dimensional analysis. So how does this work? Well, we start with this. Dimensional, dimensional analysis, we set up our conversion as fraction, just like always. In this case, we want to convert 72 inches into feet, right? So we start out with 72 inches, okay? And you can certainly set it up as a box. I think it's better if you organize it as a box. Here's the next thing you know. We know that the conversion rate says I have 12 inches in one foot, okay? Watch what happened though. Notice that I put the 12 inch down here and one foot up here. Anyone cares to <coughs> tell me why I put down here instead of up there? Does it matter if I put inch on top and foot in bottom? No. no. In this case, it does. Here's the reason why. Yes. Because if you treat this each, each block here as a fraction and link it up with multiplication like this, there's a fraction, there's a fraction, link it up by multiplication. Is it true that if it was a fraction, then that means if I have inch on top and inch on the bottom, it will cancel out automatically? If I cancel out, out inch, what unit do I have left? That's T feet. What unit do I have left if feet. I cancel out inch? Feet, right? And is that what I want? Yeah. So there's, that's it. You're done. So now, all you have to do is treat that as fraction. 72 times 1 is? 72. 72. And of course, if there's nothing in the bottom, what do you put in the bottom? 1. 1. So 1 times 12? 12. 12. What's 72 divided by 12? 6. 6. 6 what? Feet. Feet, and you're done. That's how you convert. Okay? So basic conversion technique, this is called dimensional analysis, and this is how it's done. Are there any questions on that? I know, let's, let's try another problem before I give you the, the ultimate problem here. I should have given you another one, but let's say I have this. Um, what else? Um, I want you to convert 30 centimeters into kilometers, for example. Okay? Do you know anything about this problem? Do you know the basic metric here? Kilometers and centimeters and meters and all that stuff? Yeah, no. No? no. Oh. Did you learn that in science? Well, yes. No, wait, wait, wait. You can move that up by one decimal. What is it? Okay, what, what did you learn then? What like, units did you learn there? Newtons. Grams. Meters. Grams into kilograms? Meters, meters. No. Meters. Yeah. Yeah. Grams. Yeah. Cross scales. Decimeters. Well, that means you should also learn centimeters. No. no. Yeah. Millimeters? No. Yeah. You learn about yeah. meters. We learned about meters, that's all. Yes. No? No, we learned each one. I think we did something like that. ML. ML. Milliliters and liters? We learned about M too. No, we only still have centimeters. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Shh. Let's, let's use something that you actually know. Minutes and seconds and hours. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fair enough? Yeah. Right. Watch this. Let's say I have six hours. And I want to convert this back into seconds. How would you do something like that, right? You say, okay, well, let's start from the very basic, something that I know. One hour has how many minutes? 60. 60. So let's write that down. One hour, I know at least it has 60 minutes. And what else do I know about minutes and seconds? 60 One minute minute and 60 One minute seconds. minute 60 seconds. Okay. So notice, notice how I take one step at a time. I have hours to minute and then minutes to second. The reason I want to end in seconds is because that's my ending unit. I want to end in seconds, right? Mm -hmm. So I always start with my starting unit, and I, I do some kind of, I get some basic unit conversion rate until I hit second. And this is how you set it up. Here's your dimensional analysis. Six hours. This is what I start with, okay? Next thing. What is my conversion rate for hours? Is there anything that helps about hours? Okay, so I have 60 minutes equals to one hour. Where do you put the one hour? Top or bottom? bottom. Why bottom? <laughs> so, so you can't up the unit. Very good. So I put one hour here, and that's going to be 60 minutes up top. And then now I'm done with this conversion rate. What, what's the next thing I'm going to use? Minutes and 60 seconds, right? Where do I put the minute? Bottom. bottom because I want to cancel out the minute, right? One minute is 60 seconds. Is that correct? Is, and is that the unit that I want to end with? Is yes. second is the unit I want to end with. If it is, then you're done. All you have to do now is 
multiply, multiply, that's the top, multiply, multiply, that's the bottom, and just, just do it as a fraction. So what is 60 times 60? 3,600. What's 3,600 times 6? Twenty-one thousand six hundred seconds. So that means if you're going to be converting six hours into seconds, you're going to have to twenty-one thousand six hundred seconds. Okay, and that's called dimensional analysis. Makes sense. A minute has sixty seconds. An hour has sixty minutes, so that's thirty-six hundred seconds in an hour. You take that and, and multiply by six times, you have 21,600 seconds. Okay? So, check out this last problem here. So, wait, it's going to spend one. Yeah, basically, you spend 21,600 seconds like every day at school. That's a waste of time. No, it's not a waste of time. We learned stuff. Okay, here we go. Jose, do you Okay. Take a look at this one right here. This one takes a little bit, uh, it's a bit different because it has power up top, but not to worry. I'll show you a technique how to deal with power later. But let's just say I ignore the power for now and focus on the yard and feet. Can anyone tell me the basic conversion rate for yard and feet? Okay, let's write that down. Three yards, three yards? Three feet. Three feet, okay. Three feet in one yard, is that correct? Okay, so watch what happened here. I have 24 yard cube, right? And I want to start the conversion, so I'm going to set up my dimensional analysis. The only thing I know right now is that one yard equals to three feet. Where do I put the one yard? Top or bottom? Bottom. Because, wait, top or bottom? Bottom. So I'm going to put one yard right here, and I have three feet up top, right? But think about this. How many yards here do I have? How many, how many yards? 24. 24 no, no. times 24 of, times Just 24. look at the unit. How Q. many? Q. Q. That means if you, I have to expand the unit, don't you have yard, yard, yard? Yeah. So if I want to cancel out, I, if I only have one yard here, I only have one yard to cancel out, I still have two yards left. Is that true? Yes. So if I want to cancel out the rest of the yard, I would just have to repeat this three times. And notice what's happening. One yard, two yard, three yards. Multiply, don't you have yard cube? Yard cube and yard cube? Yeah. Cancel. And look at this. If you have feet times feet times feet, don't you have feet cube? Mm -hmm. And there it is. And that's what you, you want to end with, right? So we got the yard cube taken care of right there. All you have to do is just, do is just multiply. 24 times 3 times 3 times 3. What is that going to get you? 3 times 3. Uh, okay, so good. What's twenty-seven times twenty-four? What's twenty-seven times twenty-four? Let's do that. Is that correct so far? Uh, yep. Uh, no. Yeah, you're correct so far. Six forty-eight. Yep. Yep. Okay. Six hundred and forty-eight. What? Feet. 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 Yards. No, feet. Feet, feet what? Feet. 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 Cubic feet. Okay. Because notice here, feet, 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 that's cubic, right? Because notice that you are multiplying across. So if you have feet times feet times feet three times, you write it as feet cubed or cubic feet. Okay? And once again, guys, let me sum this up. This is called dimensional analysis. Look at it closely. Okay? Here's your quiz for today.